Number one is pitch. Pitch is all about how you articulate what it is that you're about and what change do you want to see in the world or what is, what is the problem your business is solving. For instance, a couple of months ago, I went to a networking meeting in Twickenham. And actually, it was um, Dr. Vince Cable was uh, the person chairing that meeting. I was really, really inspired by what he shared and how the government had uh, procedures in place and policies in place which they were helping small businesses in. So after the session, I walked up to him and I said, you know, this is what I do. This is the company we run. This is our vision. We have an event coming up and we'd really love if you could grace us with your time. I know he's a busy man, but at the same time, he turned and said, listen, I'll check with my PA. If it's possible, he will let you know. I'm like, great. So within a week, we got the confirmation that Dr. Wins could come to the event. That is a part of a good pitch. It condenses time. It gets you action. And it gets you someone as incredible and honorable as Dr. Wins Cable. <laughs> It's my privilege to be here because, uh, you know, we've got recovery going in the British economy now, and, uh, you know, and I and the other people in government will claim credit for it, obviously, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's actually you guys who are making it possible. You know, it's the people who are starting up businesses, uh, hiring staff, uh, investing, you know, and that's happening here. It's happening better in Britain now than almost any other Western country, probably in the world, actually, uh, and we've got to keep it going and you're the people who will make that happen. Um, I was asked to come and just say a few words, not give you a, a big spiel, but just a, a few things about what I think we ought to be doing in government to help you. Um, and it's partly government getting out of the way and stopping doing things, and it's partly doing things. And I'll just divide what I want to say into those two things. In terms of getting out of the way, I guess we do recognize that we've got to create a tax system that is friendly to business, encourages entrepreneurs. It's not totally straightforward because when we came in, the government was broke and we need, we need revenue, obviously. But what we have tried to do is entrepreneurs' relief through capital gains tax, uh, the tax concessions on EIS and SEIS, which are helping to mobilize risk capital, uh, trying to, for those people who are self-employed, depend on income, uh, getting the threshold up so people pay tax later. So we're trying to create a tax system which raises plenty of money for the government, but is also helpful to you. I think the other area where we're trying to get out of your way is getting rid of some of the unnecessary regulation. Now, you, you know, we do need regulation because we don't want the banks collapsing again. We have to protect the environment. But there's a lot of silly regulation, and we're trying to get rid of it. We did an inventory when we came into government. We found there were 20,000 government regulations affecting business. And we're just trying to cut through the, what we call the red tape challenge. For every new regulation we bring in, we're, we've got commitment to take two out. Uh, there are some we keep fighting, some we actually we can't agree on. I would rather we were a bit more open to entrepreneurs from overseas, because actually a lot of people from abroad, like you, uh, which are driving our business. And I want us to be liberal about that. But we want to get rid of some of those burdens. Now, what should we be doing, and what should we be doing more of, I think top of my list is making sure that business can get access to finance, both loan and equity. We've just had a banking crisis, terrible consequences. The banks were pretty conservative anyway. We're very reluctant to lend to, on intellectual property, on exports. They prefer safe stuff, lending against household property. Uh, and the, bus, the banking crisis has made them even more conservative. So what I'm trying to drive is what we call a business bank, a UK business bank. You won't see it, it's, it's virtual, it's not in the high street. But we've already got out about 780 million, and this is going into new platforms, peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, crowdfunding. We're helping to seed those markets. Uh, we're backing angel networks. Uh, we're supporting new banks that are coming in, the ones you haven't heard of yet, but will operate a more entrepreneurial approach to lending. And in this way, make sure that your generation isn't crippled in the way that previous people were by the conservatism of the banking system. 
and that it's much more flexible, open, and you can get both equity and debt. Secondly, we want to make sure that government isn't crowding you with lots of confusing uh, bits of advice and support that is uh, just simply too complicated. So we're concentrating on one or two really good systems that work. One of them is what we call the Growth Accelerator. We run it through Grant Thornton, and this is for companies already established trying to grow, wanting bespoke expert business advice, and that is, I think, been generally well received. We've got what we call a manufacturing advisory service, which gives targeted advice on new manufacturing technologies. And the trade body, which is UKTI, used to be there sort of helping to sell tanks and aircraft, but is now very much focused on entrepreneurs, small businesses. I came back yesterday from India, and we were, I was with a whole group of small companies, manufacturing companies, creative industries, and others. In fact, the real pride of that visit is I took a company which has four employees in the UK, and they were lining up business with big Indian companies in the, man in the, in the automotive sector, a kind of mini, mini multinationals, of which there are probably quite a few in this room. And the third thing I would say is what we want to create in the UK is a strong UK supply chains. So, so that you can sell into government through government procurement, which is currently heavily biased against new small companies. We're trying to clear away some of the pre-qualification pre questionnaires and the other stuff which is getting in the way. And also making sure that the big companies, which are investing in industries like cars and the aerospace, also in the creative industries, energy, that they actually feed back into British suppliers. We can't do it in a protectionist way. We don't want to but I've developed what we call an industrial strategy where we're helping British companies uh, through innovation, training, and other ways to get business through the supply chains that are developing out of the really big companies. Anyway, I, I, that's enough from me. I'm, I've been told I could take a few questions yes. if you want. But well, thank you for, for what you're doing. It really is appreciated. I know you're doing it for yourselves, but by <laughs> being... <laughs> but, uh, by doing well, you're also doing good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you.